that the Capitol has been breached. This is coming from Capitol Police. Every week, nearly 13 mass shootings. Iconic Venice boardwalk now resembling a refugee camp. Americans are not winning their battle against obesity. If you haven't watched any of my previous videos based on this video's title, you might conclude that I'm some kind of Trump-supporting, McDonald's-eating, pro-gun, anti-abortion, patriotic American conservative. But in reality, I'm not even American, and especially not conservative. Prior to moving to the United States, I lived most of my life in Europe, particularly in Switzerland, Croatia, and Germany, but I also lived for some time in Singapore, Kenya, South Africa, the United Kingdom, and Denmark. So I think I'm in a pretty good position to make a well-informed video about this topic. Can you hear this? They're doing a honking contest here? The American Dream. Is it still alive? I remember back in 2016 when I first came to America, I arrived in New York City with a plane. And just before we landed, I looked out of the window and I saw the Statue of Liberty in the distance. This was a really special and emotional moment for me because I know that millions of people immigrated to the US and the Statue of Liberty was the very first thing that they saw when they arrived. The words engraved under the Statue of Liberty say, Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Does this poem, written to tribute to refugees and immigrants, still have any meaning? Before I dive into the arguments of this video, I do have to make one disclaimer. Just making sure I don't get greeted by an angry mob next time I arrive in Europe. Everything that I'm going to say applies to the average viewer of this channel. So if you're watching my videos, chances are that you're ambitious, hardworking and educated, or at least on your way to becoming educated. If this description does not really apply to you, you should take everything that I say here with a grain of salt. While doing research for this video, I noticed that there is not a single video out there talking about why it would be a good idea to move to the US. They're all just pointing out how horrible this country is and why you should never come here. And yet, somehow, the rich and powerful people of this world keep sending their children to boarding schools and colleges in the United States. 75 countries in the world have been or are currently governed by someone who graduated from a US university. And 17 of them have studied just around the corner at Harvard University. And this doesn't even include the 8 US presidents who went to Harvard. And this is not just limited to education. So many successful startup founders and business people have launched their careers in the United States. 55% of all American startups valued at over $1 billion have an immigrant founder. One major US venture capital firm even only invests in startups that were founded by immigrants. This is how much Americans believe in immigrants. To be fair to all the critics, the US does make it very easy to point fingers at all of its problems. So if you ask the average European what they think about America, they will always point at lack of universal healthcare, junk food and obesity, no social safety net, guns and mass shootings, Trump, inequality, homelessness. Let me know in the comment section below what the first thing is that comes to your mind when you think about the US. What most non-Americans, and particularly Europeans, don't seem to understand is that, first of all, Europe comes with its own even bigger problems, at least in my opinion, but that just aren't so visible. And secondly, all of the aforementioned problems with the US, which are real problems and don't want to deny that, they won't really affect you if you match a description of the people who watch my channel. That is, you're hardworking, ambitious, and educated. I will divide this video into two parts talking about these two points. So, what exactly is wrong with Europe? First of all, there is lack of innovative mindsets. In my personal opinion, this is the most severe problem that Europe and many other countries have. And yet, most people aren't even aware of this. In America, when you want to do something disruptive, like starting a new company or a YouTube channel or doing something that's a bit unorthodox, people get excited for you, they support you, they want you to do something crazy. And then if you succeed and you make a lot of money, people are happy for you because you succeeded, you created new jobs and you did something good. And if you fail, people are not going to laugh at you because they won't see you personally being a failure. Failing occasionally is just sometimes part of winning. At the same time, in Europe, when I talk to people about starting a new company or doing something crazy, reactions are usually along the lines of, are you sure you want to do this? What if you fail? What if something goes wrong? Are you doing all this just for the money? Why don't you just focus on your studies? And then when you end up succeeding and making a lot of money and creating a lot of jobs, people don't care about it. But if you fail, then all of a sudden everybody says, oh, I told you so, and they will see you personally as being a failure. Obviously, everything that I just said here applies to averages. I'm sure there exist many close-minded Americans and many open-minded Europeans. By the way, I would love to see in the comment section what you think about this and what your personal experiences were in your home countries. The median age of the 10 largest German companies is around 100 years. It's almost twice as much as the median age of the 10 largest American companies. And I'm very convinced that Europeans' mindsets is partially responsible for that. 
Next up, I want to talk about how accepting society is of immigrants. And before I do that, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and turn on the notifications. What I'm going to say now is based on my own personal experiences as well as experiences that many of my international friends had, including many non-white friends. Most countries and cultures in Europe have been around for centuries, if not even millennia. That's also why Europe is so beautifully culturally rich. But at the same time, it comes with a problem. The French live in France, the Germans live in Germany, the Swiss live in Switzerland, and there's always this us and them separation in every European country. So if you move out of your home country and go somewhere else, wherever you go, you will always be part of the them group. And this doesn't mean that you will always be faced with hostility wherever you go, but you will have a harder time becoming friends with the us group. And very often you will just end up hanging out with foreigners. Employers in Europe might just be slightly less likely to hire you simply because you are different. And even I personally had that feeling so many times of having a really hard time to fit into the us group. And the way to solve that problem in Europe is by becoming as similar as possible to the us group as you can. In other words, you're supposed to assimilate into a culture. When Germany took over 1 million refugees in 2022 alone, some well-intended German politicians encouraged all of these refugees to learn accent-free German. And even though they meant well, it kind of shows this divide between the us and them. When I moved to the United States, from day one I felt at home here. There was not a single moment when I thought, oh, I should become more Americanized. I mean, what does it even mean to become more Americanized? There is not really such a single thing. Everybody in the US is in some way or another an immigrant, except obviously Native Americans. And even though Americans do have quite a lot of national pride, this doesn't create a separation between us and them, as it does in most countries in the world. In America, it's totally normal to be American of European descent or American of Asian descent. And now you might be asking yourself, but Samuel, what about white supremacy and racism? These are real issues and I'm going to cover that in the second part of the video. I'm also curious to hear about your personal experiences if you ever moved to another country. Did you feel like you were struggling or did you feel like you fit right in? You can let me know in the comment section, I always read all of my comments and try to respond. Next up, I want to talk about career opportunities in the US. In many American companies, if you're smart, innovative and ambitious, you can get promoted way faster than in Europe. Your seniority isn't even nearly as important as your skills. Even as an intern in an American tech or finance company, you can make ridiculous amounts of money. Just after my first year of undergrads, I made over $15,000 per month working for a New York City-based hedge fund. And I know this may even be an outlier in the United States, but I'm 100% certain that I would have never made that much money working for a bank in Frankfurt, Germany. I have dozens of friends who received millions of dollars in startup funding in their early 20s, and other friends who make high six-figure salaries in their late 20s. And meanwhile, in Europe, you have to be happy that you can intern somewhere, and often they're not even going to pay you for it. Lastly, I want to talk about business and startup friendliness. When my friend and I opened our first company, we started two legal entities, one in the US and one in Switzerland. In the US, all it took us was a few clicks online, paying a few hundred dollars and our company was up and running. And the reason why it is so easy to start a company in the US is because they want you to start companies and create jobs. And therefore, they're not going to put any kind of bureaucratic obstacles in your way. And meanwhile, in Switzerland, which, by the way, is one of the most business-friendly countries in Europe, we had to pay over $20,000 in a huge bureaucratic process to open our first company. And we had to go through three mental breakdowns. Now they're making coffee. And go through a nightmare of a bureaucratic process to get our company up and running. The state acted as if they were doing us a favor by letting us do business. And this kind of mindset is just so fundamentally wrong in so many ways. And also, there's just so much more venture capital funding available in the US compared to virtually any other country in the world. All right, so this brings us to the second part of this video, talking about why the aforementioned problems with the United States won't really affect you personally if you move to the US. First of all, there is lack of universal health care. While it may be true that a lot of Americans really don't have access to proper health care and are drowning in medical debt, this won't really affect you, because if you move to the US as a young, educated and smart person, you're going to land a great job at a great healthcare, probably better than you can get in Europe. And therefore, as unfair as it may be, it won't really be a problem for you personally. Second of all, there is junk food and obesity. This may be the largest misconception about the United States overall. Yes, there exist some areas called food deserts in the US, that is, poor regions that don't really have access to quality food, but you will most likely never see such a place when you move to the US. So even though this is a very real problem which American politicians should urgently address because everybody should have access to quality food, it again won't really affect you. I would go as far as arguing that I have access to better quality food here than I had back in Europe, including wealthy Switzerland. 
because right now I can just take out my iPhone. With a few clicks, I can get organic groceries delivered from Whole Foods within a few hours to my home. And also when I decide to eat out in restaurants or some other places, I have tons of healthy options. I think the fitness and health industry and whole trend about this is much stronger here than it is back in Europe or in other parts of the US. Next up, let's talk about the absence of a strong social safety net. Well, this is a very real issue and I don't want to downplay this in any way. It's not really something that will affect you because unemployment rates in the US are extremely low. And when you move here and you have your fancy job and you may lose it at some point, you're easily gonna find another fancy job that's gonna pay you just as much money. And even if you do end up unemployed for a few months, assuming you were fiscally responsible enough, you will not really have a problem because you made so much money that you should have a lot of savings left to cover this. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think about the three points that I addressed so far and whether or not you agree with me. Number four is guns and mass shootings. Again, very real issue, needs to be solved urgently, but it is not something that will affect you. I personally wouldn't want to live in a dangerous suburb of Chicago because it is actually dangerous, I cannot argue with that, but at the same time most parts of the US and all the parts of the US where you would consider living are actually really safe and just as safe as Europe. Number five is inequality and homelessness. Yet again, this is a very serious issue. I personally believe that the economy and a whole country should work for everyone living there, not just for a few selected rich people. But at the same time, this is not really going to be affected by your decision of whether or not you move to the US. So as sad and unjust as it may be, this shouldn't really become part of your equation. Lastly, I wanna talk about the political division of the United States. I think of all the problems that I mentioned so far, this may be the only one that actually worries me on a day-to-day -day basis. With the rise of populists, it can very easily happen that some laws regarding immigration and employment are suddenly changed in very ruthless ways. For example, in 2020, I and many international students were at the risk of having to leave the US because classes were happening online. The last administration really wanted to force universities to resume in-person classes in the middle of the pandemic, and they tried to do so by, well, bullying international students and threatening that they would have to leave. Luckily, MIT and Harvard finally joined lawsuit within just 24 hours of this announcement, and they managed to force the last administration to back down on this. But there was still this one week of complete uncertainty about this. I and hundreds of thousands of international students in the US have our complete lives here. I have my apartment here, my friends, my job, my everything, and I cannot just pack my stuff tomorrow and leave. I mean, I don't even know where I would go. And even though nothing ended up happening in the end, there's always a risk of some ruthless politicians passing laws that can negatively affect you. That risk also exists in Europe for non-Europeans or immigrants, but I think the overall political climate in the US is just way more toxic than in Europe. This brings us back to the big question of the beginning of this video. Is the American dream still alive? Do the words engraved under the Statue of Liberty still have any meaning? I personally believe that the American dream as presented in this poem is indeed dead. I think that if somebody is uneducated, doesn't speak English, or poor or struggling, the US is really a hard place to live in. But as sad as it may be, this is just something that you and I cannot really change. And on the other hand, I do strongly believe that the American dream is indeed very much alive for people who are young, ambitious, smart and educated. If this does sound like you, I think you should consider spending at least some time in the US, be it for your studies, for work or for something else. If you don't like it, you can always come back to your home country, but I do believe that all the lessons that you're going to learn here are going to stay with you for life. Most foreigners who moved to the US and became really professionally successful had a background in either engineering or math or computer science. And these are also currently the most sought after jobs in the US. So if you want to become better at any of these topics without having to spend the excessive amount of time in a classroom, you could check out Brilliant who kindly agreed to sponsor this video. Brilliant is a website and app that teaches you all kinds of STEM topics from basic mathematics to artificial intelligence. And you learn by doing. They use all kinds of interactivity to teach you to understand everything how it works. Earlier in this video, I talked about my internship in finance that paid me over $15,000 per month. So if this is something you're interested in, you could learn more about quantitative finance by taking their quantitative finance course. You can go through all of the material yourself and even manipulate things visually. And they're going to teach you all the basics you need to know about quantitative finance for landing such a great internship. And for viewers of this channel, Brilliant is offering a 20% discount off the annual subscription for the first 200 people who sign up. You can sign up directly on brilliant.org slash Samuel Bosch. I'm gonna put that link in the description. So I want to thank Brilliant for supporting me and if you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and maybe you can also leave a nice comment down below. You can also check out my day in a life at MIT video over here and my video about my life principles for success over here. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Kind of did that in a weird way. I'm gonna do it again. <laughs>